Barakat Yahweh, Ba Hashem Yahweh Shai, Ba Hashem Racha Hakodash. Um, this lesson is going to be a brief lesson uh, explaining the Passover. Um, you know, brothers that want an in-depth uh, breakdown of the Passover, you know, you can read Exodus the 12th chapter. Um, and there's, you know, videos that the apostles and elders have done. Um, this particular one is on uh, GMS Info Doc Channel 11. It's dated March 7, 2017. So this was last year. And then um, this is on GMS Info Doc Channel 11. And then this one here, the Passover, various topics, is on GMS Info Doc Channel 12. This was more recent, January 18th. It's like it's January 18, 2018. So if you want a little more in depth, you could either watch those or like I said, read Exodus, the 12th chapter, the whole chapter. Um, and I'm sure there's other videos that other apostles and elders have done that go into it. Um, <clears throat> but um, just to summarize it, uh, the Passover, the word Passover means to just that, to pass over. And uh, the reason why it was called that, when you go back into the land of Egypt, we were slaves in the land of Egypt for 400 years. And altogether, we were in the land of Egypt for 430 years. And this is a big controversy now where these people are saying that the year um, uh, 2019 or 2020 is going to mark the 400th year of us in slavery in America. And that that's when we're going to get out of here and all this, that, and the other. That, that's, that's not the case. Because that's not... That's the uh, 400 years that was spoken of in the book of Genesis, the 15th chapter, which was a, a a vision that the Lord gave to Abraham. That was dealing with the 400 years of captivity and slavery in the land of Egypt. And as you read further down in that Genesis, the 15th chapter, it tells you that the uh, reason why the Lord couldn't do it during Abraham's time was because the uh, the iniquity of the Amorites wasn't yet full. Now the Amorites are those Hamites, Canaanites, you know, and the, all the other parasites and Je Hivites and all those that were in those lands that have to f had to fulfill their uh, wickedness before the Lord could finally take them out of there. <clears throat> okay, um, so this is Exodus tw 12 and 40. It says, Now the sojourning of the children of Israel who dwelt in Egypt was 430 years. So we dwelt in Egypt for 430 years, but we were captives in Egypt for 400 years because our forefather Joseph was in that land. He was brought there as a slave and he built himself, the Lord built him up to be a ruler over Egypt because the Lord knew that there was going to be a famine that was going to come down the road and the Lord used Joseph to pres preserve uh, our forefathers beginning with Jacob and the other uh, patriarchs. Okay, so while in Egypt, the captivity was, was rough because the sp scriptures speak about it being a furnace of of uh, furnace of affliction, I believe it was, or a furnace, iron furnace. It was an iron furnace, meaning the, uh, the work was rigorous. The, uh, the pain and the uh, oppression... Uh, iron furnace, okay, it's furnace. I spelled it wrong, Salakia. You know, so it was it was very rigorous. So the children of Israel prayed to the Lord to be able to be delivered. Deuteronomy four and twenty. But the Lord Yahweh had take had taken you and brought you forth out of the iron furnace, even out of Egypt, to be unto him a people of of inheritance, as you are this day. So pretty much that was a, a fiery furnace, and and it was very devastating, you know, and it was a very hard captivity. So while the children of Israel cried to the Lord, the Lord said he heard us crying unto him. So he set up Moses to go and speak to Pharaoh to release us from captivity, from bondage. 
But the Lord hardened Pharaoh's heart because he knew that Pharaoh wasn't just going to let Israel go like that. You know, so the Lord hardened his heart. And um, so what the Lord did was he, he did many signs and miracles and brought um, ten plagues upon the, uh, the, the, na uh, the nation of Egypt at the time, you know. Uh, I believe that was Exodus 4. And um, what happened was that the Lord, uh, uh, um, the Lord um, hardened Pharaoh's heart so that he wouldn't let Israel go so that the Lord can show all these signs and miracles um, upon them to, to destroy them and to show the power of the Lord. <clears throat> and the ten plagues were all different manner of plagues, turning water into blood, you know, locusts, lice, uh, uh, hail mingled with fire, you know. And the last plague, the tenth plague, was the uh, destruction or the killing of all the firstborn in Egypt. Okay? Exodus 4.21, And the Lord said unto Moses, When thou goest to return into Egypt, see that thou do all those wonders before Pharaoh, which I have put in thine hand, but I will harden his heart, that he shall not let the people go. And thou shalt say unto Pharaoh, Thus saith the Lord, Israel is my son, even my firstborn. And I say unto thee, Let my son go, that they may serve me. And if thou refuse to let him go, behold, I will slay thy son, even thy firstborn. So this was after the ninth plague. This is the very last plague that the Lord was about to bring upon the, uh, um, the Egyptians. And this is just before the Lord was about to allow... Uh, Pharaoh to release us from his clutches. <clears throat> so what happened was the very night, the, the first month, matter of fact, the first month and the, on the 14th day of the month, which is the Passover, and it is also the beginning of the Feast of Unleavened Bread, a one and the same, that's when the Lord gave the command to Moses, you know, actually prior to that, but that was the, the night where we were supposed to slay the lambs, every family according as they were able to eat. And the blood that was drained out of these sacrificial lambs was to be put on the doorpost and on the lintels, meaning on the front where your door was. Let me just type that in. Uh, door post images. Let's see what comes up. Um, trying to see if I can get a close up of an actual door. Uh, let's just see front door. Front door. Uh, okay. This is a good one here. So this is the post, and these are, or this, I believe this is the lintel, and these are the posts, the two posts. So the Lord said to strike all of this with the blood of that sacrificial lamb, so that when the angel of death came through there to destroy the firstborn of all the Egyptians, where there was the Egyptians themselves, their servants, or their uh, cattle. So we had to put the blood here, and when the angel, which is Yahweh Shai, he was that was Yahweh Shai, saw that blood over this door, he would not touch any of the firstborn of this particular house. So everywhere where Israel was at, and every house they had that put over, you know, the the doors, door posts, and the lintel, you know, every house that Israel was at, they they kept, you know, they kept doing that. Because if not, there would have been a a death in that in that home. So, after that, they, they, they put the door over the, the blood over the door. They all ate the Passover that evening with, with the lamb, uh, bitter herbs, you know, and they, uh, they had unleavened bread, you know, and the bitter herbs represented that hard captivity that we, that we served under the Egyptians. And that very night after this Passover, Yahweh Shai came through and slayed all the firstborns of the Egyptians, and they were all crying. 
they were all in bitterness. And, and Pharaoh urged Israel, Moses and the Israelites to leave and flee and go and sacrifice to their power. You know, and when we did that, we got out, of, got the hell out of Dodge, so to speak. Then we moved on, went into the wilderness, and from that point on, we had to keep this particular feast as a memorial of our captivity, as a memorial of our deliverance from the land of Egypt. And this is something that was supposed to be done throughout all of our generations, as you read through the book of Exodus, the 12th chapter. All right? Um... And it, like I said, you know, if you go to these two videos, uh, the Passover, Solemn Days, various topics, GMS Info Doc channel. I haven't watched this one. This is a year ago. I recently did this one, the Passover, various topics. It goes into, you know, uh, uh, the particulars, you know, because there's a lot to go into. So you will have to actually sit down and read the history and, uh, and to, to get it, okay? So you would see, it says, and they shall take of, it says, and you shall keep it, or Exodus 12 and 6, and you shall keep it up until the 14th day of the same month, that's a lamb, without blemish, without spot, of the first year. And the whole assembly of the congregation of Israel shall kill it in the evening, and they shall take the, of the blood and strike it on the two side posts and on the upper door posts of the houses wherein they shall eat it. See, so it's, you, you were supposed to strike the two side posts and the upper door posts of the houses. And they, sh they shall eat it And they shall eat the flesh in that night Roast with fire and unleavened bread And with bitter herbs they shall eat it Eat not of it raw nor sudden at all with water But roast with fire His heads with his leg And his, with the pertinence thereof Because back then we would roast the whole lamb You know today You know if brothers have Have the means to do it So be it But we don't have that me the means to do that So we have to you know Buy and, and cook the lamb You know uh, uh, Whatever we are Are able to get you know we're in captivity the scripture say we shall eat our bread defiled among the gentiles it says and you shall let none of it remain until the morning and that which remains of it until the morning you shall burn with fire and thus shall you eat it with your loins girded your shoes on your feet and your staffs in your hand not no damn uh uh glam dinner you know sitting there you know you know i mean you can eat with fork and knife if you want you know but really, this was so, something that was done in haste because that night was a, a, a night where we had to hurry up and eat it. That's why the women weren't able to put leaven into the uh, the bread to let it rise because it takes time. Everything was done in haste. It, it was even eaten in haste because we had to run up out of there. After we ate, we had to run up, pretty much run up out of there. You know, and you shall eat it in haste. It is the Lord's Passover. For I will pass through the land of Egypt this night and will smite all the firstborn in the land of Egypt, both man and beast. And against all the gods of Egypt, I will execute judgment. I am the Lord. And the blood shall be to you for a token upon the houses where you are. And when I see the blood, I will pass over you and the plague shall not be upon you to destroy you when I smite the land of Egypt. And this day shall be unto you for a memorial, meaning a remembrance. And you shall keep it a feast to the Lord throughout your generations. You shall keep it a feast by an ordinance to forever. Okay? Seven days shall you eat unleavened bread. So the first night of the Passover, which is the first night of the unleavened bread, that's when you will eat. You will not eat leaven. You will eat, just eat unleavened bread. I mean, we normally eat tortillas, you know, uh, those tortillas that Issachar makes, which are usually unleavened. Just make sure you check the package for the ingredients. And um, it would be seven days. So the 14th night at evening, which is the beginning of the 15th day, that's when you will start eating unleavened bread all the way to the 21st day. So seven days you would not eat unleavened bread. At the end of the seventh day, that's when you will start eating leaven again. Okay? So... Let's see. Let me see if I could uh, pull up a calendar real quick. Uh, calendar. So let's say, let's say, you know, we eat, let's say we eat in the Passover in February, for instance, and let's say it falls on February fourteenth that evening. This would be the actual first day. This night would be, which is the beginning of the 15th day, would be the first day of unleavened bread. So it would be one, two, 
three, four, five, six, seven. So the 21st day at evening, when the sun went down, that's when you were able to start eating unleavened bread because you kept it seven days. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So this once this day was done and the sun went down, that's when you were able to eat the unleavened bread again. So seven days the unleavened bread was supposed to be eaten. Okay, even the first day shall you put away leaven out of your houses. And, it, and if you have any leaven inside of your house, anything with yeast, any types of bread, cookies, and stuff like that, you have to get it all out of your house. You know, I know things are tough, so brothers that have stuff like that, you can keep it in your car or you can keep it, some, you know, somewhere outside of your house. Because, you know, I know brothers ain't really got the dough like that to throw the stuff out, you know. So you could just keep it in your car or keep it, you know, some if you have a storage somewhere, you could keep it there, you know, until the seven days are up. For whosoever eateth leavened bread from the first day unto the seventh day, that soul shall be cut off from Israel. And in the first day there shall be a holy convocation, and in the seventh day there shall be a holy convocation to you. No man of work shall be done in them, save that which every man must eat, that only may be done of you. And you shall observe the feast of eleventh bread, for in this self same day have I brought your armies out of the land of Egypt. Therefore shall you observe this day in your generations by an ordinance forever. In the first month of the fourteenth day of the month at evening, you shall eat unleavened bread until the one and twentieth day of the month at even. Seven days shall there be no leaven found in your houses. For whosoever eateth that which is leaven, even that soul shall be cut off from the congregation of Israel, whether he be stranger or born in the land. You shall eat nothing leaven, and all your habitations shall you eat unleavened bread. And pretty much, we're supposed to keep this uh, uh, to all generations. And you shall observe this thing for an ordinance to thee and to thy sons forever. You know, so pretty much we were supposed to keep this and we still keep it to this very day. You know, now the thing that's going to uh, uh, overshadow the Passover out of Egypt is this new Passover that's going to come, which is in the land of so-called America, which is the second uh, deliverance. And, it, and it's no coincidence that America is called, is, is spiritually called Egypt. Okay, this is the book of Jeremiah 16 and 14. It says, <clears throat> Therefore, behold, the days come, saith the Lord, that I shall no more, it shall no more be said, the Lord liveth that brought up the children of Israel out of the land of Egypt, because we still celebrate that to this day. That's a memorial. Every time we keep the Passover, we keep the Passover as a memorial of the Lord delivering us from Egypt. And, he, and now, even more significant, is we keeping the Passover also for the great sacrifice that Yahweh Shai made for us. That's why it's, it, 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 it's even more of, of more significance. But the original Passover we were that we kept or we keep is the deliverance out of Egypt. So there's going to come a day where it's not going to be said that the Lord delivered the nation of Israel out of the land of Egypt. It says, but the Lord liveth that brought up the children of Israel from the land of the north. And this there is no captivity that we went into that outshined the uh, Passover from and, and the deliverance from Egypt. So this uh, land of the north is talking about North America. And the great deliverance out of the new Egypt or the uh, spiritual Egypt, which is Babylon the Great, which is America. So when that time comes and the Lord delivers us out of here, it's going to overshadow the uh, Passover and the deliverance of Egypt because it's going to be much more spectacular than the deliverance that, that happened during the time of Egypt. So it says, so we're not going to, that, 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 um, that uh, 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 Passover in the past is going to go, it's going to be lessened and this Passover is going to be uh, um, uh, more. And in this Passover, we have a lamb, which is Yahweh Shai, and his blood and, and the, the, the doors, uh, the upper post and the side post of the doors is our mind, our spirit, you know. And if we have that blood in our mind and our spirit, when the Lord comes, He's going to deliver us and not suffer destruction to come upon us. Matter of fact, when you look up that word pass over here, I read something. The word is Pesach in the Hebrew. This is from H6453. Passover, sacrifice of Passover, animal victim of the Passover, festival of the Passover. Right here, uh, 
an example exemption okay so this is an exemption it says a sparing immunity from penalty and calamity so pretty much the blood of Yahweh Shai is the thawa, which is a Hebrew word for mark that is going to exempt us from judgment if we happen to be those elect that's why we say we're the hopeful elect Ezekiel 9 and 4 and the Lord said unto him go through the midst of the city through the midst of Jerusalem and set a mark upon the foreheads of the men that sigh and that cry for all the abominations that be done in the midst thereof now this mark here is totally a totally different mark than the mark in Revelation 13 which is the mark of the beast but because you have the word mark in the English most ignorant folks you know, beginning with Israelite camps out there, IUIC being the main one, they look at the word mark and they include the word mark or they, they grab all the words mark in English and, and claim that they're all the same thing. But it's not. That's why you have to go back to the original language it was written in to understand what it means. So when you go here to Ezekiel 94 to the word mark, the word mark there is tha and awa, thawa. Now the word thawa is desire. Mark, mark as a sign of exemption from judgment. So Yahweh Shai, his blood is that exemption from judgment for us in these times or this second Passover, sort of speak. And our minds be in the door and the, the upper and, 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 and side post be in our mind and that's where the blood of Yahweh Shai is. So that is the exemption from judgment that the Lord gives us if we are part of the elect. So Jeremiah 16, 15, but, to the, but the Lord liveth that brought up the children of Israel from the land of, no, of the north and from all the lands whither he had driven them, and I will bring them again into their, to their land that I gave unto their fathers. And that hasn't happened yet. So here it is, 2018, and we are in the land of the north, here in North America. And this is where the great deliverance is going to be. And when Shai comes with the chariots and those missiles are shot, this great devastation and destruction is going to be remembered and it's going to overshadow the uh, Passover and the great deliverance out of the land of Egypt uh, over, what is it, uh, uh, f was it 1,500, uh, let's see, 2,000, uh, about 3,500 years ago, give or take. So this is going to overshadow that. Because remember, a day to the Lord is a thousand years, and a thousand years is one day. So this has been only like three and a half days to the Lord, from that time to this time. <laughs> that, that's, that's heavy right there in itself. All right, so pretty much the Passover is a, a commemoration of the deliverance the Lord gave us in the land of Egypt. You know, the exemption from judgment and the deliverance out of the land of Egypt. We kept, we still keep it to this day until the Lord delivers us a second time from the second uh, our, our captivity or this uh, new Egypt, and then we'll keep this feast in the uh, in the in the uh, kingdom. Now we don't know for sure if we're gonna still keep the other Passover or just as a memorial, you know, because that is still a great deliverance. But this new uh, Passover, for lack of better words, is gonna overshadow the old Passover. Okay. Uh, so with that, I hope you brothers have been edified. Um, if you have any questions, uh, you can leave it on the comment board. Um, as far as dates are concerned, you know we given we gave the uh, the uh, uh, camp heads in the different state camps, and I'm sure they pass it out to other camp heads in other state camps and uh, uh, other country camps that uh, are in good standing. And uh, those brothers will give the dates out. You know, for these different high holy days, uh, as needed. All right. So, um, with that, I hope you brothers have been edified. To the next time, I say shalom.